Good morning everybody, it's Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop, and we're going on another thrift haul today. We, yes, I said we because I do have a mouse in my pocket today. So I am leaving Philadelphia in a second, I'm getting ready to get on the Ben Franklin Bridge to cross the Delaware River into New Jersey. I am a New Jersey native, as I have said before. And I'm going to hit my uh, couple of thrift shops in Camden, and then a shop I've never been to before in another town that's also in the southern part of the state of New Jersey. But man, it got cold last, it's gotten cold, hasn't it? I mean, not just here in the Northeast, but like you guys down in Texas, how y'all doing down there in Texas? Is that how y'all talk? Kind of like that? Now don't write me any bad email or comments, I'm just teasing. I know y'all say y'all. And, and if, well, yes, and people in Jersey say use, a use. Now, my parents didn't let us say that growing up. So our, there is a, I wish you could see this, only in Philly. There is a huge pink stiletto heel on top <laughs> of a trash can. Right, and I'm like right near, I'm like two blocks from the Betsy Ross house. All right, let's concentrate here. Let's get on the bridge. This is one of those bridges where, you know, it was built in 1923, I think. There's like eight lanes to get to it, but once you get on it, you gotta squeeze into like two lanes. All right. So maybe if you look on either, maybe if you look, I don't know, you might see some of the bridge in the uh, scenery on the side. Can't really tell. But yeah, um, it got cold. I know it was cold in Texas. I see it was like down to 45, which is chilly for you guys this time of the year. I know there's already snow in parts of the, uh, what, the upper Midwest? Colorado, that's not the Midwest, is it? I don't know. You know us northeast, Northeasterners. You get me out of Pennsylvania, Jersey, New York, New England, I'm kind of, I mean, anything south of Baltimore is like the land of cotton. Not really. But it got to uh, the mid-30s here last night. I have not turned the heater on yet. Uh, I usually try not to turn it on until at least Thanksgiving. But I do have a wood-burning fireplace. And so I did pick up some firewood the other day. Haven't had a fire yet, but tonight might be the night. Let's we'll see what happens. All right, so uh, I'll tune back in. I'll bring you guys back in when I get to the thrift shop. Hopefully I can film in there and find some good stuff. I'm trying to think of ways to make these thrift hauls a little more interesting. It seems like I'm always just pushing a cart around and aiming the camera at the shelves. I don't really know how else to do it. I mean, trying to make thrift haul videos a little more unique is kind of difficult it's kind, it's like it's like being the fifth husband of Zsa Zsa Gabor on your wedding night you know you know what to do but you don't know how to make it interesting <laughs> so I don't necessarily I don't really know how to make these thrift hauls any more interesting than oh look what's on the shelf worthless clear pressed glass no, I haven't had any coffee, but it would not make any difference. I'm pretty much like this all the time. I can make a pot of coffee in the morning, drink a cup. I can leave that pot on the, you know, in the pot. I can come back at midnight and reheat that same coffee that's been sitting in that pot all day long. I can drink it and go right to sleep, you know, in an instant. Coffee, like caffeine, coffee does nothing. I like the taste of it, but it doesn't affect me. All right. We're going to stop here at one of these combination 
gas station things that has like everything in it, including a Dunkin' Donuts or Dunkin' as they want to be called now. Excuse us. Just like KFC. They couldn't be Kentucky Fried Chicken anymore. And Dunkin' Donuts doesn't want to be Dunkin' Donuts anymore. It wants to be Dunkin', so that's what we'll call it. Alright, I shall be back with my coffee. Bye! big. Still here. And this really has more of an opalescence. I know it's a milk glass, but it has that what they call the ring of fire. I think you can see it. See it? No, you can't see it. I can see it. These are actually half price today, so they're a buck a piece. Now would you buy them at one dollar each? I just, I just don't get into milk glass, but I know some of you do. A buck a piece. There's still uh, twelve of them. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know. I'm not seeing much. Depression glass pattern right there. What is it? Quick, grab your Jean Florence price guide. That's pretty. Um, this is that American, I don't know that it's, there were a lot of companies other than Foss Story that made a pattern that looked like this called American, but this isn't, this is different than amber. See, that's what I think of when I think of amber. This is more of a really nice autumny color. Autumny? That's a nice fall color. I'm not really big into, uh, oh, that's cute. I'm not really big into, uh, Amber, but this is this is a little different. Nice fall color. I wonder if those are on sale. I'll have to take a look. Don't know. This is a pretty typical pattern for uh, Faustoria. I think this blank, if I remember, is called Baroque. I could be wrong on that. I, I don't remember the pattern. Chintz was a really popular pattern for them, but I don't this this I don't think this is chintz. But it is. I think this uh, 
blank or mold is, is I think it's called Baroque, but it's definitely Faustoria. Probably anywhere from the late 30s into the 60s, they made this for many years. Not sure where its mate is. Don't need another set of those. Sometimes I don't have the patience to go through all these bags, but once in a while you strike it rich or strike it big. Look, there I am, about 10 years from now. <laughs> depression. Doesn't it? Don't need another one. Blue one. All right, don't get mad. I didn't buy those milk glass goblets because I'm going to be the one that's stuck with them. Now, there were 12 of them. They were a buck a piece because they were on half price. They were originally, what, $2 each? Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, 12 of them. So 12 bucks for 12 goblets. But look, it's not my thing. I don't want to keep them. My house is not a museum. And they just don't sell. Now, I know you milk glass folks are screaming at me. That's because you want to put them in your china closet. But you won't pay me 45 bucks for a set of six of them. No. <laughs> so even if I took the set of 12 and I broke them up and sold six and six, two lots of six, I'm only going to get 15 bucks, 18 bucks for a set of six. I might even lose money on shipping. It's a pain. There's a, it's a big box. It's a lot of shipping mat packing materials, and it just isn't making me the profit margin that I want. Remember, I passed by a lot of depression stuff in there, a lot of China. Didn't buy that stuff because I'm not trying to buy something for a dollar and sell it for two dollars. And I checked my comps. I went all through. Doesn't matter if it's Westmoreland, Indiana. Now those were slightly unusual. You don't normally see goblets on a nice tall stem like that. Most of the milk glass cups and goblets and things are chunky, thick. They usually don't have a nice tall, elegant stem that had a, that wasn't hobnail. It had a nice fruit motif on it. Beautiful, but I can't make any money on it. Okay. Now, unless one of you writes to me and says, Scott, I'll take all 12 of them for $699, then I will come back over here and buy them. So, I had to leave them there. But, I did make a purchase, probably for myself, although I probably could also sell these. I bought two candles. I'm not a big candle guy. Um, I might light one once in a while, but I bought two candles that are really vintage looking and they're not, they're, you know, new. Who, see that? This is called, hold on, 
Sandra Mag Magsman. I'll let you see. You big time shoppers know what that is. I don't go to TJ Maxx and Marshalls and all that stuff. I don't know all these designing people. But there she is looking quite happy with herself. And um, here's one with a witch, vintage looking witch on a broom. I like the polka, dot, polka dots. The polka dots. And this one has a quirky vintage pumpkin jack o' lantern. So don't you think they're, they have that kind of a retro look to them? Yeah, I think they do. Uh, and they're completely unused. New in package. And I paid a dollar fifty each. Now candles are expensive. No, I mean you Yankee candle people, you guys will pay like seventy bucks for a candle. I know it's more like twenty bucks, but anyway. So three bucks plus plucks, three bucks plus tax for those two vintage candles. I might sell them, I might just keep them, they'll look cool. Alright, so that's all I bought. Didn't buy anything else in there. <laughs> Let's go to the next shop. Okay, I'm back in my restore and I just want to show you, this wasn't here the last time. This is a matching Depression Era dresser and bureau. It might be difficult to see, but I wanted to just show you an element of this dresser, of this set rather that makes it a little more higher quality than a lot of depression furniture. Not everything in the depression, and there was some good furniture made uh, in the 1930s. If you open up these drawers, uh, the two drawers on the top here, I would like to show you that if we pull this drawer out, that's called a dust divider. Let me pull the bottom drawer out. So there's the inside of the bottom drawer. I probably should have my flash on. And this extra divider here in between the two drawers is nice. There is a center track that the drawer slides on. That's higher quality. And in the cheaper stuff, this wouldn't even be there, this dust divider. And look, there's some nasty dust right there that did not fall on your cashmere sweater because of this dust divider. So that means it's a little higher quality. A little more solid. Not all dressers have that. So just a little something to look for. Not bad from the 1930s. 325 for the two pieces. I like it. We all know packing supplies are expensive. So those of you who are sellers, we're, we are always looking to cut costs whenever we can. So I never buy brand new tape from the big box stores. I don't even order it from Amazon because when I come to my restore here, they always have plenty of this packing tape. They sell it for a dollar a roll. I can't really get it any cheaper than that. And it's not crappy tape. Uh, it works very well. I've never had any complaints. I've never had any packages fall apart. And um, I have plenty of rolls at home, but I just bought another roll just to show you that uh, go to your restore. You never, ever know what you're going to find in there. Okay, I'm getting ready to go into my second thrift shop of the day, but I don't expect to find anything. Because in this particular store, there are a couple of GWLLs. That's an acronym. You know what it stands for? Goodwill Lounge Lizards. I'm telling you. They get here at the second the store opens and they're inside all day long. I can come at 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, you get the idea. They stalk the door where they push out all the fresh carts of stuff and they jump on it. I don't know why they let them do that. It kind of ruins it because these two dudes are in here all day long. I guess it's not illegal. They're kind of loitering. Maybe they buy something but... I'm not expecting you to find anything unless I outsmart them. And that just might happen today. Let's go find out. My nemesis is here. <clears throat> oh, happy day. Customer parking for the Antique Center and the Luncheonette only. Looks like I'm going to have an egg salad sandwich for lunch. I was going to pick this set up. But this guy... 
He lost his head. Too bad. Bye-bye. Merry Christmas. Look, everybody. I found my dream stove. Cream and green enamel, 1930s, in beautiful condition. It's only a hundred and fifty bucks. I love it. All right, we are pulling into a place called Wacker's Trading Post. <laughs> That's the name of it. <clears throat> I've been here before. See, Wacker's Trading Post. <laughs> well, I couldn't film in there because <clears throat> Mr. Wacker had his music a little too loud. I would have gotten a copyright infringement. I did buy something right here. I know the bag is upside down, but there's a, I don't want to turn it the other way because there's a tiny hole in it. Anyway, you can see that it's imitation grass. And I can tell by the style of the houses on it and the graphic on the bag that <clears throat> it's from the 1950s. Uh, I bought it for myself because I'm going to be doing some restoration work on some of my model train scenery that I'll be putting up closer to Christmas time. So this is, vin you can, I'm sure you can still, excuse me, I'm sure you can still buy this, but I don't know, you know, the brand new stuff might look, have a different color than the old 50s stuff. So, you know, again, here it is, a used furniture store. There was a lot of glass in there and stuff like that, but um, this had no price on it. I took it up to the guy and said, how much? He said, eh, 50 cents. If I were to go to a model train store or something like that or buy this new online, there's no way I would get it for 50 cents and I certainly wouldn't get uh, stuff from the 1950s. So I was pleased. Okay, going on to the next town. The nice thing about, you know, here in Jersey, the most densely populated state in the country is that the towns are all connected. It's just town, 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 town. So let's go to the next town. I've got to show you my kitchen too with like, you know, my kitchen is clean. My whole house is clean, but every time I should show you the kitchen, it's just like covered in stuff. It just seems to be the kitchen counter is kind of like the place to, ooh, 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 ooh. Come on, come on, come on, come on. It seems like the kitchen.